In this video, I'm going to show how to integrate Butterknife with our existing Android application. There's going to be a lot of themes here. Butterknife is an external library that we're adding to our application by editing our build.gradle file. Secondly, Butterknife helps us to write our program a lot faster. Because what we need to do, here's, here's the ultimate goal with Butterknife. We have our layout that we've been working with, and we know if we take a look at our Android Studio, we know that our layout is actually an XML file under the covers. That's essentially a view. Now a view is the V of the model view controller design pattern. The controller is our activity, which is called GPS a plant. Now in this in this thing called GPS a plant, I'm going to go ahead and um, let's see. Well, that will just uh, just one moment. Go to presentation mode. So in this activity, we have a method called on create, and this method on create is when it's part of the Android activity lifecycle, and it's invoked when we are creating essentially this view for the user to see. One of the things it's going to do is set content view, which you see on line number 15, which is where it says, this is the layout XML file that I want to associate with me as an activity. In other words, line number 15 is associating the view, an XML file, with the controller, which is either a Java file or a Kotlin file. Now, back in the old days, what we had to do is say, find view by ID, and then remember what we called something like a button. So like button two, like this, okay? But the trick is that this, if I do control alt V, it's going to save the result of this method to a local variable, which means I can only use that variable in the onCreate method, which is kind of limiting because onCreate is only called when our screen is rendered. So that is not going to be of much use to us. So in Kotlin, I can do a control, I'm sorry, in Android Studio, I can do a control F, which makes a field out of it. But notice that the field type is a view where what I actually have is a button. Now remember polymorphism, variable type tells us what methods we're allowed to call, and view is a very high level class, so it doesn't have a lot of methods on it where the object type tells us what actually happens when we call those methods. So what we have to do then is we have to change this from a view to a button, and then we end up with a cast issue. It just starts to get really sloppy really quickly. So you see now I have to cast down here, and you see we ended up just going back and forth quite a bit just to get access to one of the widgets from our screen. So. Butterknife helps to solve this issue. Butterknife makes it way easier. We no longer have to do all that funny business in the onCreate method. So let's jump right into it. Since Butterknife is essentially an add-on, it's not part of Android, we have to include it, and we include it by going to our build.gradle file. When I go to the Butterknife website here, I'm just going to grab the implementation and annotation processor that we see under download. Now, frankly, I think this is pretty easy to do, as long as you know which file to access. Double shift, build, and you see something here called app. That's the file we want. So double shift, build, app. Go in here, and you see dependencies. These are essentially anything that we need to build our app, any kind of third-party libraries. So I can simply paste in the two Butterknife dependencies we saw earlier, and then choose save. Now, let's implement this in our activity. Let me jump back into presentation mode and double shift. And we will go with GPS a plant. Now I promise no funny business on on create. Now I'm going to stick true to that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say button and I've renamed the buttons to give them a little smarter names. So we'll say button uh, BTN pause. So this is my variable. Now let's use butter knife to put an object inside of this variable. We will do that with an annotation. So at bind view, and then we'll say r.id.btn pause, like so, and do a couple things here. Alt enter. Oh, sorry, we need to sync first, don't we? So that it can know that uh, Butterknife is, has, been, has been added. So let's let the sync happen and then we'll finish the rest of this. Okay, now sync, that didn't take too long. So uh, sync happened, so alt enter. And now it knows what this bind view is. It's also resolved uh, BTN pause. And guess what? That's it. 
So let's get our autocomplete text as well. We'll say at bind view. See, so it goes a little faster this time. R.id.act plant name. And we will say, but uh, we'll say auto complete text view. See, no casting needed. We can just call it what we want to call it. Alt enter. Okay. And we'll say uh, ACT plant name. Notice I'm naming the variables the same thing as what I called the uh, what I called the widget in the layout. It doesn't have to be just for me. It makes it easier to correlate one with the other. Okay, one more at bind view, and let's go with R ID ACT location, and then we'll say auto complete text view one more time, and we'll say ACT location just to confirm because I did pause the video when I renamed everything. I just want to show you what I did. If I go to the content GPS of plant, uh, just a moment. So if you see here, when I click on the pause button, give it just a minute, the ID is BTN pause. If I click on the autocomplete for plant name, ACT plant name. If I click on the location, ACT location. And in case there's any doubt, we can go under the covers of this uh, content and we can verify that the autocomplete text view called ACT plant name is indeed an autocomplete text view. So if you can remember a couple of those things, just put them in your mental clipboard, uh, the name of the components, ACT plant name, as well as the type of component, autocomplete text view. You can kind of marry up how that XML layout file comes over here and becomes these bindings courtesy of Butterknife. So this is actually quite easy. Uh, let's just make a method. We'll say public void do it. Okay. A uh, little throwaway method. And open curly close curly. Notice that the method signature, we, we don't have to pass in a view. Uh, we used to have to do view v here. We don't have to do that anymore with Butterknife. It's a bit, it's kind of smart there. So all I need to do is annotate this with on click, like so, and then say r.id. Dot btn pause. And what I'm saying here is when the pause button is clicked on the layout I just showed you, have it invoke this method here called do it. Let me go ahead and pop this into presentation mode because we'll put a couple things in here. And of course, this is just demonstration. This is kind of some dummy stuff. So I'm going to do a quick and dirty. But what I'll do is I'll run up and see that we have a ACT plant name. So I'll say ACT plant name and then we'll say dot get text dot to string. Okay. And now we know a shortcut with Android Studio. Control Alt V will assign the value of that method to string to a local variable. We'll call that plant name. Okay. ACT location. Okay. Dot get text. Dot to string. Got that. Cool. And once again, Control Alt V will assign that to a new variable and we'll call this one location. Now a quick and dirty toast. Toast dot make text. Uh, we'll pass it in the current context and we'll say plant name colon plus plant name plus location plus location. And then we'll say, okay, uh, we want to show this for a long time and we're going to go ahead and show. So a toast, I know I hit that one kind of quickly. If you haven't seen a toast before, it's just popping a little message up so we can confirm we have everything wired together properly. One more thing we need to do, and you will forget this because I did, and I always forget this. One small change we need to make to onCreate. Uh, we need to call a static method butterknife.bind, which just says, okay, great, make it all happen. Uh, we just need to do that one time, no matter how many annotations we have. It's just so simple, it's so easy to forget. While I do this, I, I notice one other change I need to make. The pause button, I remember I changed that to an image button, not a button. But you know what? I don't need to bring this guy in anyway because I've already set up the on click down here. So I don't really need a reference to this button. I'm going to go ahead and remove that reference. Save. Everything else looks good. So let's deploy. I have a couple of breakpoints set, one in on create and the other in this do it method. Let's see what we get. Our application's loading now. Let's hit the on create method. So we'll go ahead and F8 through that. Looks like I hit F9. Oop, there we go. F8 through that. Just confirm everything works as we assume it would. And sure enough, our application renders. We know we're just testing things out. So we'll say plant name. We'll say Eastern Redbud, one of my favorite. Location, Cincinnati, Ohio, where it is native. And then we're going to click our pause button. 
And if all works, we should see a little toast that come. It'll hit the debugger first, but we should see a little toast come up here that says Eastern Redbud Cincinnati, Ohio. So, oh, look at that. I click the pause button and notice that this do it method is firing now in the debugger because it's wired up to that pause button. So F8, we can get the plant name and we'll just confirm. Are we able to get the plant name? Sure enough, Eastern Redbud. And that is indeed what I typed over here. Location, F8. What do we get for location? Cincinnati, Ohio. And sure enough, that's what I typed over here. Finally, I'm going to quickly hit F9 and bring the application over so you can see, sure enough, that toast does appear and our butter knife implementation is good. So learning to program Android is one thing, but learning your favorite libraries is really kind of another level. It's like, what's your favorite app? So I hope this video has been helpful. I'll have several more that co cover several other libraries. Thank you.